It's just fascinating to hear, and it shows you the leverage the never Kevin or the anti Kevin people think they have for Congressman Norman to say this is just round one. Uh, they've been at this for months. They've been talking about this for months throughout the whole election year. If we win, what happens? Uh, put that aside. They've been at this for three days. Uh, so that, they, that, the, that the never Kevin or anti Kevin or holdouts, whatever you want to call them, keep saying, uh, you know, it's just proof that they're going to keep asking for more. That every time they get, they ask for more. And if you look at the vote count, they believe they have the leverage. Even though they're in the minority, they have the leverage. One other quick point. Uh, you see Donald Trump up there with just one vote and how embarrassing that is to him. Uh, but that Matt Gates would nominate Donald Trump for Speaker of the House on January 5th, hours away from yeah. the second anniversary of January 6th, just tells you how this is not a serious enterprise, how at least many of the holdouts are just not serious people. Uh, two years ago tomorrow, Donald Trump tried to steal the country, tried to overturn an election, tried to subvert the democracy that lives in that building. So it just shows you that this, for some of them, is just not a serious enterprise. It's a protest. It's a sport. Call it what you will. Matt Gates can choose his own words, but it's not serious. He and it's took, not about governing. Took the words out of my mouth. Uh, I'll go a step further. It's repugnant. I mean, the idea that you have a sitting member of Congress standing in the place where, at the time, the speaker was hunted. And, and she, the vice president of the United States. And the vice States. president of the United States was hunted by people stirred up by the president. And now he's officially, formally nominated by one of the people who helped to, to turn that anger and that violence is absolutely repugnant. It, yes, it's not serious. Yes, it shows how, um, you know, how kind of out to lunch this whole process is. But it is worse than that. It's, it's just gross. And it's interesting uh, that you don't have to be a member of the House of Representatives, Caitlin, in order to be nominated to become the Speaker of the House. To, to be the Speaker, you don't have to be a member. of. And I'm sure Trump is looking at the, the screen right now, and he sees he's got one vote. Uh, and Hakeem Jeffries has 205 votes. Uh, you covered Trump for a long time. How is he reacting to that? I mean, I imagine he's fine with being inserted into this at all. This had kind of been an idea that people had been talking about in his world, this idea of nominating him for this. It's less to do with Trump, more to do with the fact that they are trying to block Kevin McCarthy. That's really what the focus of this is and the animus uh, from that group of never Kevins, I guess we, we should say never Kevin McCarthy, since there's another Kevin on the board now, uh, that are voting against him. And, of course, Trump, you know, has been looming over all of this, but not in the way he wants, because he had urged other Republicans to vote for Kevin McCarthy. It changed nothing. And so this seems to be a way for these, these hardliners who are not voting for Kevin McCarthy to get back in his good graces after they ignored his advice, which was to vote for Kevin McCarthy Trump predicted that this would end today. That's what he wrote on Truth Social uh, late last night or early this morning. That has not happened, obviously. This is not even anywhere close, as you heard from Melanie's reporting. And I think what strikes me is to see from these backroom negotiations that are happening, and we're not getting details of exactly what they're agreeing on, is how frantic all of this is. And it speaks to the fact that this majority is so slim. A year ago, Kevin McCarthy was predicting they could flip 60 seats in the House. Look how slim the majority is. It is causing him to give up all the speaker he would, all the power he would really have if he did ultimately become speaker. And it's connected to what we were just talking about. If you look at the reason why they didn't get to where they wanted to get and people predicted that they were, were going to get, he himself predicted, is largely because they had so many uh, members who were just not electable. And it's in large part, in many cases, because of the election denialism. Well, yeah, and it's not just Matt Gates uh, showing disrespect for what happened in these hallowed halls on January 6th by nominating the guy that stirred it all up. You'll remember just a couple weeks after January 6th, it was Kevin McCarthy right. that right. went down right. uh, to Mar-a-Lago and said to the Republican Party, to the country overall, but to the Republican Party, this is okay. This now has license to be part of our DNA, the guy that, that stirred up January 6th. So um, Kevin McCarthy did that in, in a lack of respect of what happened in, in those hallowed halls on January 6th. I would note, you know, we had noted uh, many times over the last couple of years, ever since he made that trip to Mar-a-Lago, uh, that he didn't really seem to live up to the title of minority leader, you know, his actual title as, as leader, that he seemed to be, McCarthy, more of a follower. And I think that's fully on display this week as to why 
this was not locked down. Why you're seeing what Caitlin is describing a frantic process right now, it is a failure of leadership, the actual position he's seeking. He's already shown this week, even if he ends up with the gavel, just the way that this process is going, uh, that he doesn't have the credentials uh, for that in, in terms of being able to effectively run this place. Let's not forget that one of the reasons he went to Mar-a-Lago was exactly for today, mm -hmm. right. because he wants right. Donald Trump's blessing, because he thought he wouldn't be in this position with Donald Trump's blessing, that it would, would take him over the top. I, I just want to talk about some uh, texts I've been getting from members who are either allies of Kevin McCarthy or have been voting with him. Uh, one of them said to me, we don't know what's in this package. There is already concern that Kevin McCarthy is giving away the store and that apart from the chaos and dysfunction that it is likely to bring as they go forward, they don't know what's, what's in the works. I just want to come back finally to that one vote for Donald Trump. The votes against Kevin McCarthy are all protest votes at this point. They could have more of them voted for Donald Trump. They didn't. I think it is very significant. They are not scared of him, and it speaks to how his power has really diminished, at least with this group. You know, it's interesting, John. All 11, now 11 roll calls, have had the Democratic leader in the House of Representatives, Hakeem Jeffries, do better than the Republican leader, even though the Republicans have a majority in the House. It's... Hard to, yeah, it's, it's hard to remember sometimes that it's a majority Republican House because the Republicans are a family divided. Um, and, you know, some Republicans out there will say, well, it's only 20. Uh, but when you have 222, you cannot afford to lose. Kevin McCarthy cannot afford, if everyone's around, to lose more than four votes. If people go home, maybe that number moves, moves a little bit. But it is, it is a stunning reminder, and the circumstances are different, I get it, uh, but that you know, Nancy Pelosi and the Democrats were able to pass very significant legislation very significant legislation, some of which became law, some of which then died in the Senate. Uh, but they were able to pass very significant, controversial legislation within the Democratic Party with 222 votes. The Republicans have 222 votes and they can't even pick a leader. Uh, so, so this is just chapter one. Whoever gets that gavel then has to lead a very unruly, disruptive, many of, the, many of them anti-governing sheep. Uh, and so whether it's the debt ceiling, whether, um, it, let's, say, let, let's say, for example, Joe Biden actually gave, he's going to go to the border tomorrow. They've been telling him forever he should go to the border. What if Joe Biden actually proposed a reasonable border security deal? I will give you some border security things that many Democrats will be mad about, but I will give them to you if you will give me a guest worker program, if you will finally make the dreamers citizens of the United States. A bill that would, if everyone was on truth serum, have giant bipartisan support. They wouldn't vote for it. They would vote to vote, vacate the chair if any speaker, if any Republican speaker tried to sign on to it, they would try to kick him out. Then there's the debt ceiling, then there's more.